for God's sake, don't go to church. You say, did I hear that right? Yes, you did. And uh, I'm not taking the Lord's name in vain or anything. I'm just simply saying, uh, when you understand what the Bible teaches, the King James Bible teaches, you will see that the teaching of going to church is completely foreign to the pages of Scripture. I'm going to show you some verses of Scripture today. And I want you to understand, God wants a personal relationship with you. Not some dead religious thing or whatever else. Uh, you're going to feel a lot closer to God here in a beautiful place like this than you will in some building that was made by men. Let me show you what the scriptures have to say. Acts chapter 20, when the church got its start, the church is a body of believers, by the way. I'll just kind of spoil things a little bit. It's not a dead building. It's living people serving a living God. But when the church got its start, you're going to read about that in the book of Acts. Acts chapter 20, verse 28 says, Take heed therefore unto yourselves and to all the flock over the which the Holy Ghost hath made you overseers to feed the church of God which he hath purchased with his own blood. Jesus Christ is God Almighty. And he died on the cross and the blood that he shed, that's the purchase price of the church. Not some building someplace that's mortgaged to the banks and 501c3 under the government's supervision. No. Jesus Christ purchased the body of Christ, the church, with his blood. All right? And my job as a preacher is to feed the church of God. And to tell you out there, if you don't know about what Christianity is, my job is to inform you what the scriptures say. Not what my church traditions say, or my creeds, or my, my denominational whatevers or my catechism or something like that what do the scriptures say that is the job of, of a bible believing christian preacher next we're going to go to first corinthians chapter three again if you're new to this whole thing corinthians it's a you know corinth over there and so paul the apostle paul wrote to the corinthian believers first corinthians chapter three Verse 16 and 17 says, Know ye not that ye are the temple of God, and that the Spirit of God dwelleth in you? If any man defile the temple of God, him shall God destroy, for the temple of God is holy, which temple ye are. Not a temple built with hands, not some kind of a building that you have to go to and you have to give your 10% tithe to, or else they might be in trouble with the bank and might have to forfeit their mortgage and whatever else. That is completely foreign to the pages of this King James Bible. This King James Bible was translated from 1604 to 1611 and has remained almost unchanged. The only changes over the years were in some spelling changes and some font changes and things like that. Very few changes in over 400 years. And in all that time, real true Christians have understood you don't worship God in a church building or a temple or whatever else. Those places are social clubs. If you've ever gone to one, you'll know exactly what I mean by that. People go there to hang out and to, and to do spaghetti dinners and nice suppers and to be good community people. You're going to learn a lot more about the Lord out here in what He created. For God's sake, don't go to some church building. Come to a place like this and get in fellowship with the Lord. You get in fellowship with the Lord right where you're sitting today. You don't have to come to this exact spot or some other natural spot. God is a spirit, and they that worship Him must worship Him in spirit and in truth. You don't have to go anywhere. But what I'm saying is, in the city, there's a lot of distractions. Out here in the beauty of nature, you can understand how God created things. You can look at the leaves, you can look at the trees, you can look at the beautiful waterfalls like this, and you can see how there is a Creator. You start to realize the absurdity of thinking that this all created itself, like evolution theory teaches. And it is a theory, not science. 1 Corinthians chapter 6. Again, we'll see it. 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 19 through 20. What? Know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost, which is in you, which ye have of God, and ye are not your own? For ye are bought with a price. Therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are gods when you get saved your body will belong to God he will tell you what to do and it's a wonderful thing 
the God that can keep all of this running, the God that, that has all of nature in His hands and knows every single bird and every single everything in the whole universe. Give your life to Him. Don't go to some church building and let them put their rules. Which you, when you start to read the Bible, you'll realize these rules aren't even in here. Where is Sunday best in the King James Bible? It's not in there. Where does the Bible say to wear a suit and tie as a man? It's not in there. Beautiful dress and earrings and makeup and everything else for a woman. It's not in there. Where are altar, altar calls or, or things, just so many different things. You've read the scriptures and you say, wait a second, this isn't in there. Where is the thing of a church building, as I've been saying? It's not there. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 19 through 22. We'll go there next. A lot of people have a big prejudice against this book, this King James Bible, and yet they've never read it. They are judgmental, narrow-minded. Read the King James Bible and then compare it to what you see out there as organized religion and you will be shocked how many of these people that profess to be Christians have no basis in Scripture for what they're doing. None. And yet they'll try to guilt trip you for not being part of their system. That doesn't work. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 19 through 22. Now therefore ye are no more strangers and foreigners, but fellow citizens with the saints and of the household of God, and are built upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets, Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone, in whom all the building fitly framed together groweth unto an holy temple in the Lord, in whom ye also are builded together for an habitation of God through the Spirit. Wait a second. This is saying, this scripture right here that we just read, is saying that our body, Christians, it's a living building. You know what? I'm going to shock some people here. I'm in church right now. You say, no, you're out in the wilderness. No, I can be anywhere and my body is part of the body of Christ. I am in church all the time. And I've had professing Christians, Christians tell me that that is heresy. You know why? Because they worship a building. They don't worship the Lord in spirit and in truth. They don't care about God's sake. They don't care about what God wants. Why He wrote His Word this way. They'll lead you to believe that God is some kind of a forgetful man or forgetful being that just, that just after the Bible is written, He says, oh wait, I should have had people building church buildings and going there and calling it First Baptist Church or whatever else. That's not the God of the Bible. The God of the Bible said, it's finished on the cross. He finished salvation. He completed it. And he gets, you get to the end of the Bible, the book of Revelation, and it says, don't add to, don't subtract from. It's finished. It's done. God doesn't have any other revelation for man than what's in, contained in this book right here for you today. There's none in there. If it's not in the book, you have no business doing it. Acts chapter 17. Acts chapter 17, verse 24 through 25. God that made the world and all things therein, seeing that He is Lord of heaven and earth, dwelleth not in temples made with hands. Neither is worshipped with men's hands as though He needed anything, seeing He giveth to all life and breath and all things then why do people build church buildings? Why? Because they want the worship. Have you seen the beautiful temple? Have you seen the remade altar? Have you seen the brand new carpet that we just put in? Isn't this such a beautiful church building? They want the worship. And specifically, most times, it's the man in the pulpit, the pastor. The Bible calls them hirelings. They're there for the money. It's an income to them. That's why they're doing it. You say, well, I don't think I want to be part of that. Good for you. That shows you have some common sense. What you want is a personal relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. That's what you want. And you can come out in a place like this. You can read your Bible. You can sing praises to Him. Gather together with some friends. You can go anywhere. 
you are not tied to some stinking building with a bunch of people in there that don't care anything at all about the truth. One more place we're going to turn to here, another passage which says the same thing here. Acts chapter 7. Acts chapter 7, verses 48 through 49. Here you have a, a, the first Christian martyr in the New Testament, the book of Acts. He's actually executed, you know, murdered here. And there's a young man standing there named Saul. Saul ends up getting saved, and he's the guy that just was preaching the thing about don't go, you know, God doesn't need to have temples built with hands over in Acts chapter 17. Very interesting. But let's read here, Acts chapter 7, verse 48 through 49. Howbeit the Most High dwelleth not in temples made with hands, as saith the prophet. Heaven is my throne, and earth is my footstool. What house will ye build me, saith the Lord, or what is the place of my rest? Did you ever wonder why God created the earth to be so complex? Why create different trees? Why not just one or two different trees? There's thousands of different trees. What about bugs? What about, what about rocks? What about a rock like that? Why make waterfalls? Why make, why make nature to be so beautiful? Why? If we can just take our own man-made materials and make temples and say, this is where God's at. This is the house of God. This is where you go to meet God. And that you forsake a place like this. And you want to go and you want to learn about God in some temple that man made. And it's filled with man made rules that have appeared nowhere in Scripture. And yet you come out to a place like this and you can just feel the peace out here. You know, the Bible says that a Christian is supposed to have peace that passeth understanding. And yet many Christians go to church buildings someplace and there's no peace there. Because they have all these responsibilities that are involved with keeping up this big building and the big whole enterprise and things that go along with it. You see how backwards these people have it? For God's sake, to repeat the title, for God's sake, don't go to church. Come to Jesus Christ where you are. And then get out into nature. This is where you worship the Lord. You worship Him anywhere, but my point is, you're going to feel closest to the Lord out here. Don't even tell me, don't even tell me that you can feel close to the Lord in one of these church buildings. Those places are filled with things that will make you, you know, get your emotions up and everything else and, and high pressure sales tactics. You walk in, I walk in dressed like this and all the guys with the suits and ties kind of, oh, you know. And I was one of them. I used to be a, a hardcore Baptist, you know, and the whole thing, going to the church buildings and it's the house of God and all the other stuff. I used to be one. Nobody can say, well, you're just better. You're just some kind of a new age hippie or something like that. No, not at all. I was raised in church buildings. And for years and years and years, it never made sense. Why are we doing these things? What is this? What is this all about? Why is our church say this and that church over there says something entirely different? And as I started to get older and I started to study the Bible and I started going, wait a second, all these differences of opinion, most of this stuff doesn't even appear in the Bible. Come to a place where you understand that you need to have a personal relationship with God. If a God can create all of this complexity, He knows everything about you. That's what the Bible says. He knows your thoughts. He knows the secret things that you've done that nobody else knows about. And you're going to be judged by it, by the standards of the Scriptures. Everything that you're doing in life, whatever you're doing, does not matter. Your job, your friends, your family, your love life, entertainment, whatever, it does not matter until you get your relationship with your Creator figured out. That is the most important thing. People say, what is the purpose of life? I don't understand. What is the purpose of life? Well, if you believe in evolution theory, evolution theory says there is no purpose to life. Eat, drink, be merry, act like an animal, whatever. You're going to die and you're going to go right back into the dirt. There is no point to life if you believe in evolution theory. But if you understand, you come out to a place like this and you sit here and you say, there must be a God 
There must be some, somebody had to create this. This couldn't have happened by chance. There's no way. If you have any sense at all, you'll come to that realization. Don't ever go to a church because all they're going to do is get you into their religion. All they're going to do is get you in there and start getting your money. I will guarantee you, I've been through it. I was part of it. What you need to do is you need to understand. Pick up a King James Bible. Read through the book of John and the book of Romans. Great places to start in the Bible. And as you read through, you'll start to see what God's plan for you is. You see, God understands that you're not perfect. God understands that you make mistakes. That's why He provided a way out. All you got to do is just come to Him and be honest. Just come to the Lord and just say, I'm not perfect. I am what you call a sinner. The Bible talks about sin and says some bad things in here. Lying, stealing, cheating, dishonoring my parents, not loving the Lord with all my heart. There's a lot of things that the Bible classifies as sins. And yes, it's to condemn you, but it's to condemn you to the point where you turn to God and you say, I need your help. I need your help. This book says that I can go to heaven when I die, a place that's even far more beautiful than all of this. I can go there when I die. I don't want to go to the place that the Bible calls hell, a place of torment. The Bible, you know, God created hell for the devil and his angels. Matthew chapter 25 talks about that. Again, there's, this is a lot of stuff that you can study on your own, but the whole point I'm trying to make is if you want to find God for His sake, for God's sake, don't go to church. Don't go to some place called a church out there. Come to Him as a sinner. Cry out to the Lord and say, God, I believe You're real. Lead me to the right Bible, to a King James Bible. Don't get anything else. King James Bible is God's book in the English language. The other ones are counterfeits. Okay, again, I can prove that in plenty of studies. Get a King James Bible and start reading it. And see what it takes to be saved. You need to repent of the wicked things that you've done in your past. You need to come to God broken as a sinner and say, I can't make it. Drop the self-righteousness thinking that you're a good person and everything else. You're dealing with a God that created all of this, okay? He's far more powerful than you, far more intelligent than anyone out there. You're not going to pull the wool over his eyes. You're not going to be able to come in him and, and oh, I, I kind of tricked him a little bit. And I, you know, no, no. You come to him honestly. Jesus Christ died for sinners. All right? Come to him as a sinner. And he gives you eternal life. Call upon the Lord. Pray. Ask Him to save you. Say, Lord, I don't even know if this nut job preacher here that I'm watching, I don't even know if he's telling me the truth. I want to be shown the truth, Lord. Do it. Um, you can come out to a place like this and you can enjoy this beautiful scenery. You can enjoy the, the wonders of nature. But if you, ever, if you never get to a point where you get to know the one who created it all. But what did it mean? What does it mean? Please seek the Lord. Not through organized religion. Not through going to some church building someplace. Not by picking up books on theology or any of that other junk. It's man-made. Get a, a copy of this book right here, the King James Bible. Start to read it for yourself. Pray. Ask the Lord to show you the truth. He won't let you down. Thank you for watching.